Hey guys, and welcome to Fizz Air Software. Today, I'm gonna to unbox this Armorworks VX0200 Glock 18C. Whoop, whoop. Hey guys, and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do like, comment, and subscribe because those interactions help me get seen by the YouTube algorithms and boost the channel. Um, if you do want to come and join my Discord, there's a link down below to all my socials. And uh, I have enabled channel memberships, it's 99 pence a month. Uh, you get uh, various bloopers and goodies and a private chat, but totally optional, but really, really uh, appreciated if you do it. So we've got this Armorworks Custom then. This is the VX0200, which is a Glock 18C. So the box itself then, I quite like the box. They've gone sort of like a little bit trendy stylish. You've got some QR codes uh, for different things, sort of maintenance routine, registering it, replacement parts and the manual. Um, you've got obviously a little bit more information on the box. Um, we picked this up. This was a hundred, uh, just over 150 pounds, I think. I'll put a correction on the screen. Um, uh, from uh, Surplus Store. So the box itself, quite a nice looking box, fairly decent quality. So let's get into it. So inside then we've got our little owner's manual, which is just the sheet of paper, uh, a little bit of general information about it, and telling you to go and download the operator's manual and to register your product with Armorworks, which is cool. We've then got a silver style mag, and we get the Armorworks hex cut um, Glock 18C or VX0200. So I'll get the box out of the way. In fact, we'll just check. That is everything in the box. So the pistol itself then, um, it's uh, about, with a mag, it's about 0.8 of a kilogram. So not quite a full kilogram. Uh, fairly decent weight, considering it's a metal upper uh, and a full metal mag. It's lighter than I was expecting it to be, and a lot of that down to is down to all of these cutouts on this top slide. So you've got this hex cut out, uh, and obviously serrations are at the back to make it easy to grab the slide to uh, rack it. Uh, and it does make it a little bit lighter. I would have thought that all the cutouts put back in, you probably would have been lifting up to 0.9 of a kilogram. Uh, but So it's not a, horrifically heavy, but you can feel it in your hand with a mag. It has got a nice weight into it. Obviously with a mag, being the most of the weight, it does sit, well, it's not the most of the weight, but quite a, a chunk of weight. It sits quite nicely in the hand uh, to uh, get it uh, aimed. So looking at the slide then, we have got a um, threaded outer barrel, which we'll look at shortly with some accessories on it. We've got the metal slide with serrations or this patterning on the end to help you grab and rack that uh, slide open. Um, it's quite a nice piece. I do like the cutting uh, the etching of the logo on there, as well as AW Customs on the side. Um, we've got fiber optic, uh, as you can see there, fiber optic um, front and rear sights, which collect the light and put it into the dots on the end, just to make it a little bit easier to look at you, aim down those targets a bit easier to acquire. Then got our fire selector then for safe, uh, for safe, come on Fez, for single shot and full automatic, for just when things get really, really, uh, Crazy. We've then got our regular torch um, mount underneath to mount your torch light, which we'll have a look in, the, in a minute. We've got our two stage trigger, so you've got to pull both parts. If I'm just pushing, not pulling that little black bit in the middle, if I'm just pulling the outer trigger, it won't move. But if I pull in the middle, off it goes. And fires nice, clean, and crisp, a little bit of gas in there. We've got our uh, slide catch, which when the mag's empty, will uh, slide the, uh, catch the slide open. There must not have been enough gas to lock it back open because the mag is definitely empty. Um, nice and clean, crisp sliding back forward. And then we've got our polymer lower um, with a metal top slide. Oh, I didn't realize there was a little cool design on the back there. That is a nice little design on the back. Looks like a hornet. Um, so slide the mag out. It is slightly flared as well, the mag, which is quite nice. It makes it quite easy to locate and slide your mag in. There's no sort of, you know, messing about. It is just straight in quite neat, easily. And obviously we've got the cutouts on the pistol grip as well. Uh, the mag does lock into place nice and firm and drops back, slides out nicely. So you can do those tactical reloads uh, mid game. Um, so when I go and test this, um, I'm gonna be doing mag compatibility as well. 
So I have got access to a Tokyo Marui Glock, eight, Glock mag, a Raven, which I believe is part of um, WE uh, CO2 Glock mag. I've then got a generic ACM. I seem to think it might be a, um, KJ Works, but it was just listed as ACM uh, Glock mag. And then I've also got the uh, mag that came with, comes with the WE Galaxy and the mag that comes with the AAP01 as well. So I'll be checking those over. So we'll have a quick look at um, accessories or mounting things. So I've got here my lighter S and uh, I've got the uh, adapter there. So that just screws in positive thread. Make sure you tighten that down properly. And then it gives you a 14 mil negative. I do think that pistols, if they're gonna thread the outer barrel and it's lovely, it really is nice that they do. I do think that they should include that adapter because you don't always get one. Luckily enough, most tracers come with an adapter, but a lot of suppressors don't, or most suppressors don't. But that already does look quite cool. We've then also got the light mount, which I can't lie, that you know, that's starting to look pretty damn awesome. The only thing it is sort of missing is some sort of RMR mount on there. Now it could be that you could get a mount on there um, by accessing this screw. I am not a big um, techie on um, gas blowbacks because I basically think that there's some sort of witchcraft and wizardry and voodoo and stuff. So I tend to not mess uh, too much with them overall. But with the tracer on, that is looking pretty awesome. Now, I'm not sure if the suppressor... Oh, no, it will let me get my aspirin. So let's get the uh, light off. Now, you will notice just before I fit that, there is a bit of wobble in the top slide which I would generally expect with it being gas blowback, I would expect that that would have a little bit of wobble in it and a little bit of noise. It's nothing too disconcerting. So let's get the Osprey on there. Oh, I'm now unscrewing the adapter. There we go. All right, use the adjuster. Line it up. Now, Still a little bit wobbly in these tiny. Now that's just become absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I can't actually get that back on uh, with that being in the way, but that's pretty damn ridiculous. I will see if I can mount this. Oh no, look. Oh no, we might whew, we might get away with that. Do you know what? Let's let's try it. Oops. Uh, Finger tighten that down. There we go. It is catching on the torch, but it is going on. This uh, was on Ali or from AliExpress. This suppressor. There we go. Look. Now I'm looking at that. I think the torch might be putting a little bit of because this seems to be at an upward angle. It does seem to be putting a little bit of upward pressure on that slide. So I dare say this may catch your BBs and it may not come out of the barrel. Uh, can't even see down there uh, to check. So get this off and we'll have a quick look at the hop unit before we go and uh, do the shooting test. So we've changed the hop setting them. Pull down, on, pull down on this pin on either side and the top and push and the top slide will come off. It is a little bit stiff. And then we've got our hop adjustment wheel. Now this is not something you're gonna be able to do easily and quickly in the field. So keep that in mind that you are gonna to have to uh, sort of do this between games or whatever. Uh, and we just roll it backwards anti-clockwise to apply hop. And then we'll just put it back on. There we go and it's back on. It has got safety as well, so this little serial number clip, it's got a little arrow on it. We click it in place, and the trigger is fully secured. We unclick it, and it's back uh, to uh, live again. So we're gonna go and have a look now. We'll do the mag compatibility stuff then. We'll do the chrono in, maybe do a little bit of rate of fire as well, and then we'll come back and see where that leaves us.
second fill of BBs. Pretty much got the uh, BBs out, but couldn't lock the slide back. 13 and a half frames a second, and a freezing cold hand. Empty the mag, but isn't enough gas to lock it back. One, one fill of BBs. About 17 rounds a second. That's with green gas. Yep. Yep. <sighs> Full auto. <laughs> uh, yeah, about, about 19 rounds a second. Oof. Tokyo Murui mag compatibility. No. That's with green gas. Not sealing very well. Okay, so we're back from all that stuff. So let's start with the range then. The range was using the, the its own mag on green gas uh, with 0.25 tracer rounds, obviously, and the tracer as well. Um, with the hop set and I spent a while fiddling with the hop and things uh, and must have put about 50, 60, 70 rounds through it. Obviously, I've just shown you a, a snippet there, really. Um, I just filmed a, a snippet of it and I found it to be quite consistent. It was it was doing sort of between 35 and, and over 40 metres, but I was finding that they were just want to be perfect, one maybe a little bit too high, want to drop off too soon. Um, that could just be because the barrel needs a good clean um, or it could be that um, it's the hop and uh, hop rubber and the barrel are, are not amazing. I have seen online a few people said that the first thing they've done is drop out the current inner barrel and the um, hop rubber and replace them with aftermarket ones. And they've said after that, they've been absolutely superb. So that could be something to watch out for. The inner barrel itself is 93 millimetres long, reported on, on retailer's website, and I will link to Surplus Store where we got this from. Um, and I do appreciate uh, Elijah for letting me uh, unbox this before sending it on to him. I appreciate that massively. So that was the range, a little bit about the inner barrel. So then, on on its own mag with 144A uh, gas, we were getting about 216 to 293. Now, I'm noticing my chrono's playing up a little bit, and I'm not sure why. Uh, and I've noticed it in a few videos, but roughly speaking, we're getting 216, which is particularly towards the end of the, the gas, uh, to 293, and about 13 and a half rounds per second. Not terrible, nice and safe uh, FPS limits. On green gas then, we had 219 to 288.9 uh, FPS, um, which obviously, again, that FPS is dropping as that gas is running out. You're not going to get consistency that you do with an AEG. Um, and we're getting about 17 rounds per second uh, out of that. Um, gas efficiency wasn't amazing, but I tend to think that's more to do with the, the slide being heavier than a, a polymer slide, for example. But it does have a hell of a clean, crisp kick to it. The CO2, uh, particularly in the first two shots, were way over UK limits, over 350. It was like 370 something uh, and about 19 rounds per second. It was lovely to shoot, though. It made, made me very happy, massive smile on my face. Um, I'm not sure if I would want to run it on CO2 all the time. I'm not sure what that could or would do to the internals, but this was just purely for testing. 
So in terms of mag compatibility then, the Tokyo Marui just didn't work, just doesn't seem to seal properly. I do believe it's to do with the gasket on top that Marui would use a different style gasket to other brands. And as you can see, this one is flat and square and the one on here is sort of curved and shaped, this rubber gasket here. Now, I don't know how true it is. I've seen and read a couple of things that people have said that they've swapped the gasket out to another aftermarket one, a flat one, and the Maruis have been all right after that. Uh, but it didn't work in this. I found that the ACM, um, oddly, I didn't think it was going to work, but did work um, fairly well. A little bit inconsistent FPS, but worked. And I found that the CO2 one worked amazingly well. Uh, the AAP mag, the Action Army one, uh, works really well. Absolutely happy away with that. And the WE one as well um, did work, but I found it got a poor seal um, with the compression parts in the slide. So it did gave inconsistent FPS. So the next part then is let's have a look at gloved operation. So I've got my trusted gloves on, quite bulky gloves. Let's see what we can do now. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to get that slide off or adjust the hop. But in terms of the mag itself, I can definitely uh, refill that. I can access the valve and refill the mag, so I ain't got an issue with that. I can definitely get the mag in, charge it, select uh, mag out. I am happy with all of that stuff. Now, in terms of the top slide... Now, this might just be a, a case of, you know, skill and, and timing, but I can't access that to get it. I just haven't got the, the purchase to get hold of it. Now, to be fair, it's not something I'm probably going to do mid-game with gloves on anyway. It's going to be something I'm going to take my time over between games before the start of the day to go and set that over. So in terms of gloved operation, I'm happy that the basic operation is entirely doable with gloves, which you would expect. Uh, but in terms of uh, the sort of setting of the hop and things, that's a no-go with the gloves. So final thoughts then, I suppose, from me. Um, quite good that it's, it's relatively um, sort of compatible with mags and things and, and, and went quite happily with that. So if you have got a Glock already, generally speaking, it's, uh, it's going to be happy with other Glock mags. The performance of it for the range uh, and accuracy, I mean, lovely, clean, crisp kick to it. And, uh, you know, I'll hold that down. And that's on low amounts of gas. You know, that's really quite nice and a nice, clean kick. Uh, obviously, with it being gas, the FPS is going to be up and down because of the heat. Uh, on the evening of doing this, the room I was shooting in was about 19 degrees. Um, but the temperature, obviously, is the mag shooting more, you know, that's already starting to cool down. It feel, feels quite cool already. Um, it's The FPSs are never going to be very stable at all. Um, so it's obviously just something to consider. If you want stable FPS, then either you need to HPA, uh, get an HPA tap uh, and run it with as an HPA pistol, or you need to get an AEP, basically, and not, not own this at all. In terms of the price then, sort of 150-ish pounds, um, I'm not convinced it's as good as the AAP is reportedly to be and, and that is something that uh, I'm not sure if this video will have come out before or after I've done the unboxing of that uh, so we will have a, a, a com comparison I suppose I will do a video that compares the AAP, the WE Galaxy and I might as well throw in this into the mix as well as part of that um, you know then again, if you're liking the style, you, a lot of this is down to you are paying for the style. And it does look cool. I'm not going to lie. I do like a bit of a blingy pistol. You know, you have got the cool hex coat. You've got the nice sort of silvery brushed uh, metal effect. It does look cool. I'm not going to lie. I can't lie about that. It does look cool. The, the sights are cool. But that's down to you whether you feel like it is worth that kind of money that you're going to pay for it. So... I hope you found that useful. I will leave the usual photos uh, straight after this. Please do remember to like, comment and subscribe and help my channel grow. And I will see you next time. Bye.